Okay, so carrying on with the gearbox, these are the main gears in the gearbox. So you've got a main shaft, and that's got these gears on it. And then you've got this lay shaft, and that's got these gears on it. Uh, and then you've got a selector shaft, and it has these selector forks on it. And it's these forks that uh, then actually move the gears around to select the different gears. So a couple of things. Um, first of all, I decided to buy a new gear. This gear, I decided, was just too worn. It's got all these um, all this pitting in it. Voids, I'm not sure caused by what. But, you know, there's... Ordinarily, I wouldn't mind, but there's just a, an awful lot on this on this gear, and it's only going to get worse. It might, you know, the tooth might crumble away or whatever. So, I have got rid of that one, and I've bought a new a new gear. Now, it's recommended really to replace gears in pairs, but I haven't in this case because it mates. That's fourth gear on the main shaft. And it mates with fourth gear on the lay shaft. And the trouble is, fourth gear on the lay shaft, this comes as one entire unit. So you've got lay shaft, fourth gear, and fifth gear. So you have to buy it. Well, you can take it apart, but I wouldn't like to try it because it's very, you need to get it exactly right, this. So to replace this, I think this is about 180 quid to, to you know to replace all three. So... Um, I think it'll be fine. So we're just replacing that one gear, but not the gear it meshes with. Normally, the idea we replace the gear that it meshes with, but we're not going to do that. Okay. So then, very basically, I'll do sort of assembly on the bench just so you can see what's what. So you've got this is fifth gear. We'll do the main shaft to begin with. This is fifth gear, and this is what goes through the big uh, bearing at the back of the gearbox. We'll be doing all this later. Don't worry. So that goes in into the back of the gearbox on that big bearing and there will be a an oil seal on the end of that in a minute then we have the main shaft and we put the main shaft in through the high gear but before we do that we have to put fourth gear on and we make sure that it's all sliding free so we put that in the gearbox and then we put fourth gear on then we slide uh, third gear on uh, fifth, fourth, third, yeah. And then first and second on the main shaft are combined. So that is a sort of rough, loose assembly of the main shaft. Same goes for the lay shaft. We've got that little needle roller bearing in the end of the gearbox, if you remember. And this uh, thrush washer goes on that little needle roller bearing. And then the end of the lay shaft goes in to the bearing. And then you've got fifth and fourth gear already on the lay shaft then uh, third goes on so it goes on on this it does and second uh, and then first yeah just check out the things around the right way then there's a circlet the circlet which will then go in this groove here which we'll do all this when we put it on properly and then this dog which goes on and slots, but it can't go any further than the uh, the uh, circlet when that's on. And then there's a thrust bearing in the other end of the lay shaft. So that's the assembly of the lay shaft minus the circlet. Then you've got the actual uh, um, forks that select the gears. So for a start, you've got a shaft. This is the lay shaft. This is the uh, selector shaft. And there is a flat on this on one end. You'll find a flat. And that end goes into the gearbox first. And what it is, there's a boss at the end of the gearbox. It's a blind boss. There's no hole at the other end. And this slides into it. And the reason there's a flat is to allow the air to escape because this is a very tight fit in that boss. So you put this in, that end first, and the flat allows the air to escape so you can get the shaft right down to the bottom of the boss so it's held securely. And the order would be, you've got three different selector forks 
there's that selector fork and then this one and this one they are all they're all different all right they're quite easy to tell apart this one's got a cutaway on it this one's long and uh, this one's standard but short so hard to mix them up when they're actually in the gearbox these uh well actually but i can't uh, redo it now but so these forks go on these grooves on the gearbox on the gears right okay so there's you know there's different grooves on different gears there's some in, in here as well okay so they fit and they actually physically move the gears along to change gear and they do that because these little circular lugs they fit into the cam plate that we've already put in the gearbox yeah so when the cam plate turns these <coughs> little lugs uh, fit in the fit in those um grooves in the cam plate and that then moves the fork the fork then moves the gear and the gears change hopefully okay before uh I forgot that uh, before we can put the gears in, I need to put this oil seal in. Oil seal's always open side towards the oil. This is going in, this is the inside of the gearbox, that's the outside, so the oil seal is inwards to stop the oil coming out of the gearbox, which we don't want. So, literally, uh, just taps in. <laughs> Famous this words. Okay, I'm going to have a go at uh, assembling the gearbox uh, on camera which is going to be difficult because the camera wants to be exactly where I want to be so first thing I'm going to do I'm going to put the thrust washer in over the uh, bear the needle roller bearing on the lay shaft at the back of the gearbox there so there's a little uh, little pin that holds it on and then it sits around the uh, needle roller bearing and that's why the needle roller bearing needs to sit very slightly proud of the housing uh, when, when we put it in so that uh, the uh, thrust, wash, thrust washer can sit on it. Next thing I'm going to do, I've got some oil and I'm going to lubricate the uh, bearing. I've already done this but I'm going to put some more oil on oil in the gearbox i don't use assembly lube on the gearbox oil on the gearbox okay and i'm also lubing the uh, needle roller bearing for the lay shaft okay then i've got the the high gear the fifth gear that's going to go through that big bearing at the end and that, that we've just put the oil seal on into so I'm just going to put some oil on that uh, oil seal and then I'm going to put oil again down on the uh, down or onto the there are two roller bearings one at either end on this high gear which I didn't uh, replace uh, because I didn't need replacing there is a video of them being replaced uh, on the uh, T150 I made uh, some videos of a T150 gearbox and primary chain case rebuild and there's uh, and I did replace the bearings the roller bearings on in there so if you want to see that you can go to that one okay so we've got oil everywhere i'm just going to put some on the actual uh sorry on the race as well and then this simply is going to slot in through the big bearing and sit there there we go and later on we'll put the gearbox, uh, the sprocket on for the rear chain. Okay, great. 
And then what we're going to do, then <clears throat> I think uh, next, if I can get this in the right order, I probably won't. <laughs> next, we're going to put the lay shaft in. So again, oil on the uh, on the end where it goes into the needle roller bearing and on the shaft generally. Okay. And then that's going into the needle roller bearing and engages with the with the high gear. Okay. Um, so the lay shaft is in. I'm now going to insert the main shaft. I've got fourth gear already on the main shaft. It has to be on because it only slides on from this end. You can't get it on from the other end. And I've put in the first, the first selector fork on the, uh, on the gear. And it's this selector fork that's always a problem at, at the end. I'll explain that in a minute. So I'm just going to slide this in. Now the selector for has to go under, not over, under. Comes up from underneath. Let's get it out of the way for a minute. Come on, that's it. That's good. And then just try and engage the selector fork with its groove. <clears throat> yeah, that wasn't the gear, wasn't home properly there. Right now, so that is the selector fork, and, and you can see if you look straight down, that's where the, the shaft will slide down. The problem is that when I let go, it falls out of the way. Now, hopefully it's, it won't fall completely down out the bottom of the gearbox, but when I come later on when the gearbox is full to put this shaft in, of course it won't go in because that has fallen out of the way, this uh, selector fork, and so we need a, a trick, which I'll show you later, for... Um, for getting that back into line okay so we've now got <coughs> fourth gear in <coughs> on both main shaft and lay shaft and uh, we've got the first selector fork in I'm now going to put in third gear I think it is uh, from the lay shaft again I've already got the selector fork in this is a this is a long one Whoa! yeah that one and that goes uh, that goes face to face with the one that's already in there this one does go in like over the top so it's not going to fall it's not going to fall out of the way when it's uh, engaged there as it is now see so that's still in line but the one behind it has dropped out and so it's no longer in line it's dropped out a long way but hopefully we'll be able to get it back then I'm going to put in third gear for the main shaft. So which way around do these go? Hmm, good question. Well, I always look at the parts catalogue for help if I'm unsure. That's pretty good. But you can often tell, for instance, this one's got holes in it and this has got, uh, you know, teeth on it uh, so obviously it has to go that way really so that's second gear for the uh, lay shaft yep and then first gear for the lay shaft again with the um, selector already on it and this is the weird one that's got that sort of slight to cut away on it and again it goes sort of facing the back of the gearbox Uh, and it slots into its groove. So these two forks are, are lined up, but of course the one at the back that you can't get to with your finger to try and move back is still out of the, uh, not in line. So 
what I'm going to do now, hopefully, is my amazing trick. I'm going to insert the lay shaft, or the um, selector shaft, with this, this flat going in first. And obviously it's going to go through the first two selectors without trouble. But then, of course, it hits the selector that is out of line. So I have now got my mag telescopic magnet. Slot this in with my magnet holding the uh, that fork up, and that's it. We're done in terms of gears. Then I'm going to put the uh, circlip on the lay shaft. There's a little groove. Just might be hard for you to see, but there is a little groove there. I need to make sure it's fully clipped into. There we go. It wasn't before. And then there's this dog that goes on. Ooh, there we go. And uh, then I'm going to check my gears. I'm going to check my gears are... Uh, Everything's working, and I'll make sure that the shaft, the uh, that shaft isn't. I've got to knock the uh, selector fork shaft in fully, but though that's the gearbox assembled. And just to mention that if you want any more detailed information about what's on the videos, then there is the workshop manual that goes uh, alongside the videos, and that covers restoring the whole bike, not just the engine. Uh, and that's available from all uh, good booksellers around the world. You can just put my name, uh, Chris Rook, into the search bar, like Amazon search bar or wherever, and it, uh, and it should come up.